Hey everybody, Lars Sorensen here from the Computer Science Department. Um, given the unique circumstances of this particular spring and a little bit of the summer, hopefully not the whole summer, um, we're not going to be able to meet. Usually I would give this talk at an event, be it a academic planning day or a star day for transfer students. Uh, can't do that this year, so I'm going to do a real quick version that we can put online so you can still get some of the information. Usually this talk would run a little bit longer, but I'm going to run through and make it a little bit quicker on this version. Okay? When I get everybody together, I'll ask the question, what is computer science? And somebody will raise their hand and say it's about programming, and it's about learning about different machines, and it's about doing all of that stuff. And while that's kind of part of it, we like to think computer science is more about problem solving. A famous programmer um, once said, Computer science has as much to do with computers as telescopes have to do with astronomy. And the point is that computers are just a tool. And they're the tool that we use in order to solve problems. And that computer science is really more about solving problems. And the way we try to get that across is imagine me trying to explain how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to a close friend. Well, that's easy because we have a lot of things in common. Speak the same language, both get hungry things like that. Now, let's say when the aliens land and come flying out of their spaceship, I've got to teach the alien how to make a sandwich. Not an easy task. Don't speak the same language. I don't know if they're, you know, need sustenance. Maybe, do they get hungry? Maybe they've come to eat us and they don't want to make a sandwich. So all of a sudden that task gets a little bit harder. Now, imagine having to describe and teach a machine how to make a sandwich. We have nothing in common. It's a hunk of metal with some electric current going through it. That is not a very easy task. And at the end of the day, that's computer science. Okay? You have to represent problem solutions and find ways to do it, usually using discrete mathematics that can operate on a computer before you even get to that point. You have to look at the theoretical parts of it. Is your problem solvable? If it is, can you solve it in finite time? There are some problems out there that theoretically are solvable, but we don't have enough time or space in the known universe to solve them. Okay? Do I have an efficient solution? If I do have a solution, is it the most efficient? Can I go faster? How do I look at things? Okay? So that's more of what computer science is about. Computer science is about problem solving at the end. But we solve problems using discrete math, which is atomic steps one, two, three, four. Because then when we create our solutions, we can offload them on computers. Like I always say, computers are dumb. They only do what we tell them to do. But when we tell them how to do things properly, they go incredibly quickly. And that's where you get the value. Computer science is not just about using computers or using the World Wide Web. It's not just writing programs. And it's not about today's technology, Java, Python, Swift, Go, Kotlin, blah, blah, blah. Um, back in the dinosaur days when I was going to school, it was Fortran and Pascal and COBOL. And 20, 30 years from now, when you're giving this talk, it'll be three languages we don't even know exist yet because they don't exist yet. Okay? It's not just about the new technology. It's about the foundational problem-solving aspects of creating solutions that can be offloaded onto computers, okay? It's a fast-changing field. Twelve years ago, there were no iPhones. Now there's almost a quarter of a million people writing iPhone apps, you know? The one thing, though, is that the basic principles that you're going to learn about, data structures, discrete structures, architecture, that doesn't change. That's the same year after year, and that's what you go to university for. As far as learning different languages, learning different skills, learning different systems, that all comes with the territory. You're going to have to keep up to date as your career goes forward. Okay, but we're here to teach you the fundamental things. In a computer science curriculum, you are being prepared to be lifelong learners. And you start from the fundamental principles of what we call computer science, which is poorly named. It should have been called information science. Or applied discrete mathematics, but then nobody would be here. <laughs> um, so that's what computer science is about. It's learning to be a problem solver. And then later you offload those solutions onto a computer. Computer scientists build software, hardware, networks, robots. They create solutions to problems in every industry, size, business team. 
Okay. The question is always, will there be jobs? The answer is always yes. The old statistic used to be that there are 5 million computer science students to fill 12 million jobs. Um, these are some older statistics, but they still hold true. I can tell you anecdotally from experience that whenever the market takes a downturn, STEM people still have jobs. When things went kooky, even at the dot-com bubble, people still had jobs, people with computer science degrees. Uh, when the housing market went out 2008 and unemployment went up, STEM people still had jobs. So it's a good thing to have because at the end of the day, you're a general purpose problem solver. You can take your problem solving skills and go to any, you know, domain you'd like, sports and entertainment, medicine, uh, finance, and you can solve problems. So that's valuable in a free market economy. You can always take those skills somewhere and get a job. So as far as job security is concerned, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to go. Let me just put it that way. As far as the CS department here at Rutgers, we are a Big Ten public research university, so we're big. We have about 45 full-time faculty members. Last year, it's been about a year now, but last year we had 1,500 declared computer science majors. Now, those aren't all the people taking our classes. We also have minors. We have people who want to come and take our classes to learn how to program, things along those lines. Cognitive science majors take a lot of our classes, but we had 1,500 declared majors, and we graduated 544 students, okay, which is high. I mean, computer science enrollments have quadrupled in the past four to five years. Back four or five, six years ago, I think one of the, the graduating uh, seniors were 113. So we are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and that's good and that's bad. Part of the bad is that your initial classes, like an intro to computer science or even the data structures a little bit, are going to be big. Okay, you go into a class and there's 300 people there. It's not like going to a class, it's like going to the movies, right? The way we try to combat that is we have what are called small section sizes. So your section will only be like between 12 and 15 students. And once a week you'll meet, uh, sometimes called at a, a thing called recitation. And when you have recitation, it's only your section. And it's small. And that's when you can get one-on-one -on -one time with the TA. The professor will stop in and say hi from time to time. That's you can, you know, interact with your classmates and talk about what you're doing, look at your homework and things like that. Recitation is the time for that. Lecture is big because you've got to serve a lot of people. But recitation is when we try and combat that factor of, you know, classes getting too big. An advantage of being a big department with a lot of enrolled students is that we have a lot of resources to support things like our clubs, the University uh, Student Alliance of Computer Scientists. They're the ones that run Hack RU. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We have uh, one of the better women in computer science clubs on the East Coast. FizzBuzz does interview preparation and solves problems. Are You Mad does mobile app development. COGS does game creation. So we have a bunch of CS affiliated clubs that we can support because we're big. We also have a lot of spaces and resources. We have the CAVE, which is basically a collaborative computer lab. It's the de facto headquarters for the undergraduates. We have the hacker space where you can use Arduinos and drones, 3D printing, things along those lines. HackRU is the hackathon that the students out of USAC's run. We run it in the fall and the spring. If you're familiar with hackathons, women in computer science run their own female themed hackathon in February called Hack Hers. Code Red is our tutoring program, so because the department is big, we can provide a lot of services and have a lot of resources like these things. When it comes to the computer science curriculum, it basically goes like this. You have the Bachelor of Arts degree and the Bachelor of Science degree. First, I'm going to tell you about the Bachelor of Arts. Then I'll tell you about the Bachelor of Science, literally what the differences are. And then we'll talk about what their differences are in the real world. As far as the Bachelor of Arts is concerned, you have to take six required CS courses. CS 111 is Intro to Computer Science. CS 112 is Data Structures. CS 205 is called Discrete Structures, but it's really Discrete Mathematics. It's Discrete Mathematics 1. CS 206 is Discrete Structures 2, Discrete Math 2. CS 211 is Computer Architecture, and CS 344 is Algorithms. Every computer science student who gets a degree, uh, BA or BS, at Rutgers, New Brunswick, has to take those six courses. Those are the six required base foundation core courses, okay? You also have to take three math courses, Calculus 1, 
out of the math department, 151, calculus 1 for the sciences. You can also take 135, okay, and calculus 2. Now you'll see calculus 2, there's 152. We need you to take 152. We do not accept 136. I know I'm getting in the weeds, and you're probably seeing this for the first time, but it's a YouTube video, so you can pause it and come back and watch it different times, okay? For calculus 2, we take 152. We do not take 136. And linear algebra, 250. So all computer science students, BA and BS, need to take those three math courses. Then we get to five electives. We're going to talk about those electives in a moment. Okay? Those 14 classes represent a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. You take those classes, see you're higher, although you're allowed to carry 1D, you're good for your degree. Now, there's other classes you're going to have to take because what you're going to find is that you're a student in the School of Arts and Sciences. So you've got to meet their core curriculum. There's going to be a credit limit that you're going to have to reach. But as far as the requirements for the Computer Science major, if you're a BA, you take those 14 classes, you're in good shape. Now, Bachelor of Science. Bachelor of Science is easy. You take the BA, you tack on two more electives. So it's seven computer science electives instead of five and two science courses. What we call it is a year of science. In one semester, you take a physics course. And then in the second semester, you take a second physics course. Boom, and you're done. We also accept chemistry. You can do chemistry. Okay, so two physics courses or two chemistry courses. At the end of the day, the difference between the Bachelor of Science and the Bachelor of Arts is four classes. So it's 18 classes to complete the BS as opposed to 14 to complete the BA. Now, in the real world, what the difference in the degrees is, um, it used to be 30 years ago when dinosaurs roamed the earth and I was going to school, it did make a difference. You would get better programming jobs, more technical jobs, and and you could avail yourself of, of better things if you did the BS as opposed to the BA. Nowadays, it's not really the case anymore. If you have a BA in computer science, you can go get that programming job. You can go get that job as a database manager and things along those lines because people out there are clamoring for people with computer science degrees and, and real foundational problem-solving backgrounds, okay? Right now, in 2020, the only real difference between the BS and the BA is if you apply to graduate school, graduate school is going to ask why you did the BA and not the BS, okay? Other than that, maybe you will get asked the question if you go for a super technical job, an NSA job, a cryptography job, something along those lines, okay? Back in the day, the BA would usually be for people who were doing double majors, math and computer science, statistics and computer science. There's a couple of different combos that work well together. Engineering, you'll have a lot of engineering students that also do computer science. And the BA was almost a way of saying, yeah, you know what, I do my science with my other degree and I've taken some courses that are like this. So it's kind of the same thing, but a slightly lighter load. Um, but... The distinction between the BA and the BS is not as great as it used to be. A BA is a perfectly reasonable degree right now to get and go out and, and start your career, you know, as far as being a problem solver, getting out in the economy and, and using computer science skills. Okay? So that's the difference between the BA and the BS. Electives, there's kind of two different levels of electives. There's 300 level courses that you would take in your junior year, and these are starting to specialize, but they're still broad areas like information and data management. We call it databases, 336. It's a big, broad topic. Internet technologies, 352, big, broad topic. Principles of programming languages, big, broad topic, right? Slowly but surely, as you get to your senior year and you start taking 400-level electives, then you're going to start specializing. That's where artificial intelligence resides, security, operating systems, compilers, Finite automata, um, that's, you'll understand what that is if you get into com computer science theory. Then you're going to specialize with your 400 level electives, okay? We offer a good deal of electives. We also offer independent studies if students are interested in doing independent research, or it is a research university after all. And students have the opportunity to get involved in research. You can talk with faculty, you can go to research meetings, you can do all of that stuff. We also have selected courses offered by math, statistics, psychology, electrical, and computer engineering. We let students go take, I think, a maximum of two in different departments that they can come back and use for their computer science curriculum. If you are in the honors 
program or you're interested in departmental honors and you qualify, you can take graduate courses. Okay, you can take a couple of grad courses and maybe get a, you know, a taste of what graduate school is like when you can make that decision whether you want to further your academics and go on to graduate school after that. So you'll have that opportunity too as far as electives are concerned. Now, if you explore the computer science website, you should. It's got a lot of good information. You're going to run into something called tracks. And you can see we have six of them listed there. Computer security, graphics and vision, artificial intelligence, blah, blah, blah. A track is not something you should think of as being official like a minor. A track is just a list of courses that faculty suggest you take if you're interested in certain areas. You can take half the classes in a track and half the classes in another. That's fine. You can do the entire track. That's fantastic too. But it's not going to show up on your transcript. It's not going to be something official that shows up on your degree. These are just suggestions for people who are just starting out to get a feel for the different classes that they would take if they're interested in different topics. Okay? So tracks are good. They're going to, you know, give you a little bit of guidance. But they're not official. They're not like minors. You don't have to worry like, oh, I, I need to take two more classes in my track. Don't, don't worry about it. They're not that official. Admission to the undergraduate major. First off, for freshmen, people just coming in, it's real simple. You need to take five classes. Intro to Computer Science, Data Structures, Discrete Math or Discrete Structures 1, and then Calc 1 and Calc 2. Now, these five classes are special in that you only get two chances to get a C or higher. If you, let's say you fail intro and then the second time you take intro you get a D, then you won't be able to be admitted as a CS major in the School of Arts and Sciences. So you need to be careful with those original five courses. Okay, now, different situation. Let's say you're a transfer student, you're coming in from a New Jersey community college or you're coming from another four-year school and you say to yourself, I have intro, I have data structures, I have both my calculus. I'm going to declare right now. Well, you can't. We do require that you take at least three courses in our department before you can declare as a computer science major. Now, when you get involved at Rutgers and School of Arts and Sciences, you're going to see that the subject code for computer science classes here is 198. So what you'll hear people say is you need to take three 198 courses. So even if you come from a Newark or a Camden, you need to take three 198 courses or three computer science courses here in the department before you can declare as a major, okay? So if you're a freshman, you just want to take those five classes, see you're higher, then you go to a website and say, I have arrived, I want to be a major in computer science. You can choose BA and BS there as well. If you're a transfer student or you've come from another school or you've come from Rutgers, Newark, or Camden, you may have those requirements, but you need to take three classes first. And then after that, then we can declare you. Declaration is important. Because without declaration, you don't have access to a lot of the 300 and 400 level classes you need to meet your requirements for computer science. Okay? So, that's a quick rundown of computer science. Basically, what it is, what the faculty is about, some of our resources, and then the curriculum. Like I said, it's a quick run through because I don't want to sit here. Usually when I give this talk, it'll run anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. So I did the quick version. And the reason I'm doing that is because it's a YouTube video. You can stop it. You can go look things up on the website, www.cs.ruckers.edu. Get all of this information. Also, right there, my email address. I'm an advisor for the department. Feel free to send me an email and ask me a question. And if you have any questions about the department, computer science, Rutgers in general, I'm going to do my best to help you out. All right? Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay calm. We're all going to get through this nonsense quicker than we think, and everything's going to be all right. Okay? Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.